Production Technology of Banana Hello everyone myself Dushant Gangas I am from second year second sem I want to thank Dr Prashant Bakshi to enable me to present my project on production technology of banana So the content includes introduction classification climate and soil varieties planting fertilizer and application irrigation harvest and yield intercultural operations storage and health benefits introduction the plant is a gigantic herb basically consisting of pseudo stem made up of leaf sheets with in an inflorescence pushing through the sheets the banana is a basic staple in tropical countries and was consumed before recorded history in southeast asia There are basically two kinds of banana. Desert banana, which is consumed mostly as fresh fruit, and plantain, which is cooking banana. These were described by Carl Linnaeus as Musa pervadia sacha and Musa sapientium in 1700s. Classification: Kingdom Plantae or plant. Subkingdom: Tracheobionta. Subdivision: spermatophyte division magnoliophyta class liliopsida subclass commonidae order zingiberales family musaceae genus musa species musa pervadesiaca climate bananas need warm subtropical climate adequate moisture and protection from wind most varieties of bananas grow best with 12 hours of bright light and high humidity of 50% or higher the ideal temperature range is around 26 to 30 degrees celsius or 78 to 86 degrees fahrenheit with rh regime of 75 to 85% growth begins at 18 degrees celsius reaches optimal growth at 27 degrees celsius and stops entirely when temperature reaches 38 degrees celsius although bananas grow best in bright sunlight but high temperature will scorch the leaves and the fruit the winds should not be stronger than 4 meters per second soil bananas need moisture and well drained soil with 40% clay 75% silt and 85% loam bananas thrive in fertile well drained soil with high water holding capacity The optimal pH is between 5 and 7 because banana is sensitive to salinity the EC should not exceed 1 ds per meter low pH soil makes banana more susceptible to panama disease if soil is not in the most favorable condition improve it light sandy soil can be improved by placing a mulch around the banana plants this will improve water retention and prevent nutrients from percolating quickly into the soil Banana cannot tolerate water logging because its roots will rot. This however can be resolved by planting the bananas in raised beds. Banana has a shallow root system no deeper than 80 cm with 60% of the effective root zone in the top 30 cm. Varieties. First, Grand Nain. It is most accepted international variety. It is a tall statured plant. and a heavy yield with long cylindrical bunch on an average it produces a bunch weighing 25 kg and may go up to 32 to 35 kg with 8 to 10 hands with 200 to 220 fruits per bunch the length of the fruit is about 15 to 21 cm and the girth is about 12 to 13 cm robusta it is normal statured with black brown blotches on the stem bunches weigh around 20 kg having 8 to 10 hands per bunch The length of the fruit is 15 to 20 cm and the girth is 12 cm with fruit skin. Dwarf Cavendish. The plant stature is dwarf. Dark black brown blotches appear all along the stem. Bunches are large with compactly arranged 8 to 10 hands weighing about 20 kg. Length of the fruit is about 13 to 14 cm and the girth is about 8 to 10 cm. Skin is thick and the fruit tapers gradually towards the tip. It is not fit for export. Red banana. The plant is tall and robust-statured. 
The color of the fruit, pseudostem, petiole, and midrib is purplish red. The bunch weight is about 20 to 25 kgs with 6 to 7 hands and 80 fruits per bunch. The length of the fruit is about 16 to 18 centimeters. Nendron There is considerable diversity in the plant stature. Bunch has 5 to 6 hands weighing about 6 to 12 kgs. Fruits have a distinct neck with thick green skin turning buff yellow on ripening. Fruits remain starchy even on ripening. Planting Suckers are planted in pits dug at 45 by 45 by 45 cm dimension and whereas for TC plants a pit size of 30 by 30 by 30 cm is preferred. The pits are filled with topsoil 10 to 15 kgs FYM and 250 grams of superphosphate mixed well and pits are closed to about a couple of inches below the ground level. The suckers or TC plants are planted in the center of the pit by scooping out sufficient soil from the pit and the soil around the plant is prepped firmly to ensure the safety of the plant. Fertilizer and application Banana requires higher fertilization due to its rapid and vigorous growth and high fruit yield. The nutrient uptake studies also reveal that the uptake per unit area is more than any other crop. The nutrient uptake pattern analysis conducted in different countries showed that a crop of 40 to 60 tons of yield per hectare removes nearly 250 to 300 kilograms of nitrogen, 25 to 40 kilograms of phosphorus, 800 to 1200 kilograms of potassium, 150 to 180 kilograms of calcium, 40 to 60 kilograms of magnesium, and 14 to 20 kilograms of sulfur per hectare. This reveals that the fertilizer applied should contain more of nitrogen and potash in the ratio of 1 ratio 3. Apply the fertilizer 60 to 75 centimeters around the plant in two equal split doses. The first, two months after planting, and the second, four months after planting. For retoon crop, the entire fertilizers have to be applied in a single dose immediately after the harvest of preceding crop. Irrigate immediately after manuring. Nutritional Deficiency Nitrogen Leaves of all ages become pale green. Midribs, petioles and leaf sheaths turn reddish pink and rosette in appearance. Plantations with poor root growth exhibit such symptoms. Bunch weight and fruit quality is affected. Control Application of urea 300 grams per plant followed by irrigation is recommended. Phosphorus Plants show stunted growth with poor root development. Old leaves show sawtooth marginal chlorosis, curling of leaves, breaking of petioles and bluish green color of younger leaves. Control Application of DAP 50 grams per plant followed by irrigation is recommended. Potassium Three deficiency symptoms include orange yellow color of old leaves, scorching along the margins, reduction in total leaf area, curving of midribs, etc. Choking of leaves delays flower initiation, leading to reduction in yield and quality. Control Spraying potassium sulfate 1% solution on the leaves is recommended. Calcium The deficiency symptoms include deformation or absence of leaf lamina, spike leaf, marginal leaf necrosis, and thickening of veins. Control Application of lime 50 grams per plant followed by irrigation is recommended. Magnesium Yellow discoloration is observed in the mid-blade and mid-rib portion, however, the margins of leaf remain green. Purple mottling of the petioles, marginal necrosis, and separation of leaf sheaths from the pseudostem is also seen. Control Application of magnesium sulfate 25 grams per plant followed by irrigation is recommended. Sulfur the deficiency symptoms include yellow or white appearance of young leaves, necrotic patches on the leaf margins, thickening of veins, stunted growth, and small or choked bunches. Control Application of complex fertilizer 20 ratio 20 ratio 0 ratio 15 at 20 grams per plant followed by irrigation is recommended. Manganese The narrow green edge appears at the leaf margins of second or third youngest leaves which further spreads along the main veins towards the midrib. 
However, the intervenal areas remain green, giving comb tooth appearance. Control Spraying manganese sulfate 0.5% on the leaves is recommended. Zinc Symptoms appear mostly in limed soils or soils with high pH. Young leaves become smaller in size and more lanceolate in shape. In the furling leaf, high amount of anthocyanin pigmentation appears on its underside. The unfurled leaf has alternating chlorotic and green bands. Fruit is light green, twisted and short. Recommended control? Spraying zinc sulfate 0.5% on the leaves is recommended. Iron. The younger leaves turn yellow or white. Control. Spraying iron sulfate 0.5% along with urea 1% on the leaves is recommended. Copper. Both young and old leaves show symptoms of chlorosis and curve towards the base, which gives an umbrella-like appearance to the plant. Control. Spraying copper sulfate 0.5% on the leaves is recommended. Boron. Deficiency symptoms include reduced leaf area, curling of leaves, lamina deformation, appearance of white strips perpendicular to the veins on the lamina of young leaves, thickening of secondary veins and inhibition of root and flower formation. Control. Application of borax salt 25 grams per plant in the soil around the root zone of the plant is recommended. Irrigation. The total water requirement of banana plants is about 900 to 1200 millimeters for its entire life cycle that can be met both through rainfall as well as supplementary irrigation in order to maintain optimum moisture at all stages of growth. Providing good drainage facilities to drain out excess water from the root zone is equally important to promote better growth and enhance the productivity. In general, Irrigation of the banana plantations every 3 to 4 days during hot periods and at 7 to 8 days interval during cold weather is recommended. Flood or furrow irrigation suitable for garden land cultivation. It is the most common method of irrigation under garden land cultivation. In this system, the water consumption is very high and is costly with uneven distribution of water and fertilizers there is a chance for fast spreading of nematodes. Trench irrigation. A popular method of irrigation under wetland system of cultivation, wherein water is allowed to stand in the trenches between every two rows of the plants and irrigated. The same trench is used for draining out excess water during rainy days. Drip irrigation. This is the best method of irrigation for banana and is also suitable for fertigation. In this method, the water is allowed in the root zone of the crop in small quantities. Drip irrigation is superior to conventional basin irrigation in terms of water and nutrient use efficiency. More vigorous growth, higher yields and minimized weed growth. With about 30-40% to 40 saving of water and uniform application of inputs, drip system has the advantage of large area coverage with minimum requirement of water and labor. Here, you can see water requirement of banana at different growth stages under drip irrigation. Harvest In general, bunches are harvested in about 100 to 120 days after its emergence depending on the varieties and climatic conditions. The maturity of fruits can be assessed by change of peel color from dark green to pale green and disappearance of angularity and fullness of fingers. Ringing sound upon tapping of the fruits. Complete drying and dropping of the floral remnants from the tip of the fruits. The matured fruits should be harvested with a sharp knife, leaving sufficient length of peduncle for easy handling and transportation. The harvested fruits should be kept on the banana leaves spread on the soil. Never keep bunches directly on the soil as it causes damage to the fruits and spoils the fruit. Proper care is required while handling and transporting of the bunches in order to avoid any damage of fruits and ensures better price in the markets. In recent times, use of cableway conveyor system 
for safe harvest and shifting of bunches to the pack house with very minimum handling and fruit injury is becoming popular in the areas where commercial varieties are grown for export purposes. Yield The yield varies depending on the variable factors such as the variety, soil fertility, and fertilization practices followed and adoption of improved production technologies and the type of cultivation, that is, monocropping or intercropping, etc. The yield of marketable fruits varies from 10 to 12 tons per hectare in the mixed crop plantations or neglected plantations to 120 tons per hectare in the well-maintained plantations. Intercultural Operations Management of daughter or side suckers, removal of dried and diseased leaves, propping of plants, intercropping, weed management and intercultural operations, bunch care management, management of daughter or side suckers. No daughter suckers should be allowed till flowering of mother plant and only a single healthy sucker is allowed at the time of flowering. To arrest the growth of unwanted suckers, cut back and scoop out the growing point and then pour 1 to 2 milliliters of kerosene or any other used crude oil. However, in Nae Poovan banana alloying, healthy side suckers at monthly interval of 5th, 6th and 7th month after planting and applied with 150% RDF per clump significantly enhanced the productivity per clump and a minimum of 3 bunches could be harvested within 20 months at regular interval. Thus getting more income to the farmers. Removal of dried and diseased leaves The dried diseased leaves should be cut and removed at regular intervals, otherwise they may be the host for insect and pests and diseases, and thus cause spread of pests and diseases. Retaining at least 10 to 12 leaves are much essential for better growth and high yields and hence no green leaves should be cut from the plants. Intercropping Growing of intercrops during early stages of growth of banana plants has dual benefits of fetching additional farm income and also drastically reduces weed growth. Suitable intercrops Leguminous vegetables, cowpea, onion, soya bean, green gram, black gram, marigold, sun hemp, yams, beetroot, carrot and maize. Propping of plant in case of tall, statured and high yield potential varieties, providing support or staking bamboo, casuarinas, eucalyptus at flowering stage till harvest is highly essential to avoid breaking or uprooting of the plants due to heavy winds. With as a low cost measure, support can be given using steel wires or nylon ropes tied to a strong stay may be used to support the plants. Weed Management Physical Method Maintenance of weed-free conditions up to 6 months of planting is very critical otherwise, will significantly affect the plant growth, bunch weight, yield and fruit quality. Digging, harrowing and earthing up of field once in 30 days is an important cultural operation up to 4-5 to five months in order to facilitate better soil aeration, improve the water holding capacity of the soil and thereby favoring better rooting activity. Use of black polythin mulch is highly effective against weed growth and this also conserves soil moisture and improves plant growth and enhances yield as well. Chemical Method Post-emergence herbicide that is glyphosate at the rate 2 1 per hectare or 8 to 10 milliliters per liter of water and added with 20 to 30 grams of ammonium sulfate and good quality sticking agent is recommended. Bunch Care Management Removal of male bud one week after the opening of the last hand helps in arresting the movement of nutrients to unwanted sink. Besides, the removed male buds could be sold as vegetable, which can be used for preparation of flower pickle, which earns additional income to the farmers. About a week after the emergence of the last hand, remove the male bud leaving about 20 to 25 centimeters long stalk. Spray the bunches with 2% potassium sulfate, 20 grams per liter of water solution, added with good quality surfactant by thoroughly drenching the bunch and repeat the 2% potassium sulfate spray again after 20 to 25 days. This is useful in increasing the fruit size 
quality and to improve the bunch grade. Storage Temperature Bananas are typically stored at about 56 degrees Fahrenheit to 58 degrees Fahrenheit for long term storage and transport. Once they are ready for ripening, they are warmed slightly to about 59 degrees Fahrenheit to 68 degrees Fahrenheit. Bananas should not be subjected to temperatures below 55 degrees Fahrenheit because they are very susceptible to chill damage with green fruit actually more vulnerable than ripe fruit. Relative Humidity Optimum relative humidity is about 90% to 95%. Handling Bananas should be very carefully handled. Dropping them, scuffing them or bruising them will damage the fruit and it could contribute to water loss and may also contribute to premature decay. Benefits of Banana Bananas are a healthy source of fiber, potassium, vitamin B6, vitamin C and other various antioxidants and phytonutrients. Bananas contain nutrients that moderate blood sugar levels. Bananas may aid weight loss. Bananas may support heart health. Bananas contain powerful antioxidants. Bananas improve kidney health. Unripe banana improves insulin sensitivity. Thank you.